students with respect to human reproduction is concerned initially we have come across introduction where i put forward two technical terms human beings are sexually reproducing and they are viviparous animals oviparous means egg laying viviparous means they will give birth directly to the young ones followed by that we have come across 10 important events which occur in human reproduction starting from gametogenesis to up to parturition followed by that we have come across male reproductive system then I covered spermatogenesis structure of human sperm followed by that I introduced female reproductive system followed by that lastly we have come across oogenesis or you can pronounce it as an oogenesis followed by that so today I plan to introduce menstrual cycle so take care many times even this question has appeared in the annual examination so menstrual cycle followed by that I will explain fertilization in case of human beings then you are going to study sex determination Now look over menstrual cycle. In short, it is written as MC. Menstrual cycle. In short, is written as MC. The reproductive cycle which occur in female primates. The reproductive cycle which occur in female primate is called as menstrual cycle. Reproductive cycle which occur in female primates is called as menstrual cycle already we have come across female primates includes monkeys it includes monkeys apes and human beings reproductive cycle which occur in female primate is called as menstrual cycle primates includes monkeys apes and human beings okay primates includes monkeys apes and human beings the onset of first menstrual cycle the onset of first menstrual cycle is called as menarche onset of first menstrual cycle is called as menarche generally it is noticed at puberty in normal healthy female puberty is noticed at the age of 12 to 15 years it is absent during pregnancy it is absent during pregnancy suppressed during lactation and permanently stops at the age of 50 years known as menopause so look over here. the reproductive cycle which occur in female primate is called as menstrual cycle in short it is written as MC primates includes monkeys apes and human beings onset of first menstrual cycle is called as menarche it is generally noticed at puberty. Puberty is noticed in female at the age of 12 to 15 years. It is noticed at the age of 12 to 15 years. MC is absent during pregnancy, suppressed during lactation and permanently stops at the age of 50 years known as menopause. Lactation 
is the release of milk from the mammary gland release of milk from the mammary gland is called as lactation don't bother about this word lactation detailed explanation is there at later classes i will explain even gestation period or pregnancy also okay so next matter the length of this menstrual cycle varies in females the length of the menstrual cycle varies in females on an average it accounts for about 28 to 29 day okay the length of the menstrual cycle varies on an average it is completed within 28 to 29 days length of the menstrual cycle varies in women's or in female but on an average it is completed within 28 to 29 days it involves four phases menstrual phase pre ovulatory phase ovulatory phase and post ovulatory phase menstrual cycle involves four phases or you can call it as a four stages menstrual phase pre ovulatory phase ovulatory phase and post ovulatory phase during menstrual phase endometrial lining during menstrual phase endometrial lining will shed from the uterus endometrial lining endometrial lining will shed from the uterus as already i covered this uterus and endometrium in my previous class uterus is a large muscular highly vascular inverted pear shaped structure that lies in between bladder and rectum uterus is a large muscular highly vascular inverted pear shaped structure that lies in between bladder and rectum uterus is specially meant for the development of embryo it is composed of a wall which is made up of three layers outer perimetrium middle myometrium and inner glandular endometrium as already once i mentioned endometrium will undergo cyclic changes during mc the career menstrual cycle involves four phases menstrual phase menstrual cycle composed of four phases menstrual phase pre ovulatory phase ovulatory phase and post ovulatory phase during menstrual phase endometrial lining will shed from the uterus which causes bleeding endometrial lining will shed from the uterus which causes bleeding so uterus is a large muscular highly vascular inverted pear shaped structure that lies in between bladder and rectum it is specially meant for the development of embryo Okay, it is lined by a wall which is made up of three layers: outer perimetrium, middle myometrium, inner glandular endometrium. So endometrium will undergo cyclic changes during M C. Menstrual phase can also notice due to stress. It also occurs due to stress and poor health. So look over here. Menstruation or menstrual phase is also noticed due to stress and poor health. It lasts from menstrual phase lasts from menstrual phase lasts from 3 to 5th day or it accounts for about 3 to 5th day of 28 or 29 days m c okay so that ends first phase menstrual phase the korea during menstrual phase endometrial lining will shed from the uterus which causes bleeding it also occurs due to poor health and stress it also occur due to poor health and stress it lasts from 3 to 5th day of 28 or 29 days mc 
one more important point you have to remember here okay one more important point you have to remember in menstrual phase absence of menstrual phase is the indicative of pregnancy absence of menstrual phase is the indicative of pregnancy okay next i will enter into second phase known as pre ovulatory phase absence of menstrual phase is the indicative of pregnancy okay now look over the second phase pre ovulatory phase during this phase there is an gradual increase during pre ovulatory phase there is a secretion of gonadotropin during this pre ovulatory phase secretion of gonadotropins will increase gradually gonadotropin includes fsh and lh already we have come across this two technical linings follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone which will play a significant role in the transformation of the primary follicles primary follicles into graafian follicle for here end of the menstrual phase is the beginning of pre ovulatory phase pre ovulatory phase during this pre ovulatory phase there is a secretion of gonadotropins will increase gradually secretion of gonadotropins will increase gradually it includes follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone gonadotropins includes follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone that will play a significant role in the conversion or transformation of the primary follicle into secondary follicle secondary follicle is soon transformed into tertiary follicle and finally it is matured into graafian follicle otherwise back to my previous class i am expecting that you have remembered when the primary oocyte is surrounded by a layer of granulosa cells or follicle cells when the primary oocyte is surrounded by a layer of granulosa or follicle cells then it is called as primary follicle when it is surrounded by many layer of granulosa cells then it is called as secondary follicle soon secondary follicle is converted into tertiary follicle secondary follicle is soon converted into tertiary follicle which is characterized by a cavity known as antrum which is finally transferred into graafian follicle it is the name given to a mature ovarian follicle with ovum of mammals graafian follicle is the name given to a mature ovarian follicle with ovum of mammal according here during pre ovulatory phase secretion of gonadotropins will increase gradually gonadotropins includes follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone that will play a significant role in the transformation of primary follicles into secondary follicle secondary follicle into tertiary follicle and finally it is converted into graafian follicle in addition to that it will stimulate follicle cells to release a hormone known as estrogen it will stimulate the follicle cells to release a hormone known as estrogen and one more important event you have to remember during pre ovulatory phase endometrium regenerates during menstrual phase endometrial lining will shed from the uterus which causes bleeding but during pre ovulatory phase endometrium regenerates therefore in my previous video i have come across endometrium will undergo cyclic changes during m c right next the third step is ovulatory phase look over the name carefully you will get an idea during ovulatory phase ovulation occurs the release of ovum 
from the ovary into the ovary duct is called as ovulation release of ovum from the ovary into the ovary duct is called as ovulation generally ovulation will occur on the 14th day of mc look over here end of the pre ovulatory phase is the beginning of ovulatory phase or it lie in between pre ovulatory and post ovulatory as the name itself indicate during ovulatory phase ovulation takes place release of ovum from the ovary into the ovary duct is called as ovulation release of ovum from the ovary into the ovary duct is called as ovulation generally ovulation will occur on the 14th day of mc during this ovulatory phase fsh and lh are present at the peak level during ovulatory phase fsh follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormones are present at the peak level when the lh is present at the peak level then it is called as lh surge so during ovulatory phase fsh and the lh are present at the peak level when the lh is present at the peak level then it is called as lh surge which causes rupture of graafian follicle which causes rupture of graafian follicle and finally play a significant role in the release of ovum i will repeat this matter ovulatory phase as the name itself indicate during this phase ovulation takes place release of ovum from the ovary into the ovary duct is called as ovulation ovulation occur on the 14th day of mc during this ovulatory phase fsh and lh are present at the peak level when the lh is present at the peak level then it is called as lh surge which causes rupture of graafian follicle and thereby it will release ovum thereby it will release ovum okay last matter is post ovulatory phase after ovulation after ovulation lh will play a significant role in the formation of corpus luteum after ovulation lh will play a significant role in the formation of corpus luteum this structure which is produced due to rupture of graafian follicle is called as corpus luteum or you can call it as a yellow body which in turn will produces an hormone called as which in turn will produces hormone called as progesterone okay lh will stimulate the formation of corpus luteum the structure which is produced due to rupture of graafian follicle is called as corpus luteum which in turn will starts producing an hormone called as progesterone it will prepare the wall of the uterus for implantation it will prepare the wall of the uterus for implantation if by chance implantation will not occur both corpus luteum and endometrium this integrates i will repeat this matter and take care of this cycle during post ovulatory phase lh will stimulate the formation of corpus luteum which in turn will produces an hormone called as progesterone it will prepare the wall of the uterus for implantation if by chance implantation will not occur then both corpus luteum and the endometrium this integrates now you can easily guess the period of pre ovulatory phase and post ovulatory phase look over the point carefully pre ovulatory will lie in between menstrual phase and ovulatory phase based on that you can easily guess that it lasts from 6 to 13th day of mc it is lost from 6 to 13th day of the cycle ovulation will occur on the 14th day based on that you can easily guess that post ovulatory phase lost from 15 to 
it is lost from 15 to 28 or 29 days okay 28 or 29 days so that ends menstrual cycle like this a diagrammatic representation they are given in your ncrt book so please take care of each and every matter what they have mentioned in the ncrt Next matter is fertilization. Okay, so previously we have come across menstrual cycle, followed by that look over fertilization in case of human beings. Fertilization in case of human beings. So union of or fusion of male, fusion of male and female gametes. fusion of male and female gamete is called as fertilization or you can call it as a syngamy union of or fusion of male and female gamete is called as fertilization as you know already while explaining ovid it is an muscular tubular structure measuring around 10 to 12 centimeters in length it includes infundibulum with the fimbriae ampulla ismus while explaining that ismus i covered one important point fertilization will takes place in the ampullary ismic junction fertilization occur in the ampullary ismic junction when both male and female gametes will reach the ampullary ismic junction simultaneously then only the chances of fertilization is more look over here fusion of male and the female gamete is called as fertilization and the resultant cell is called as zygote you know this word very times okay union or fusion of male and female gamete is called as fertilization and the resultant cell is called as zygote which is deployed in nature fertilization takes place in the ampullary ismic junction back to oviduct i'm expecting that you are remembered oviduct is a muscular tubular structure measuring around 10 to 12 centimeters in length it includes infundibulum with the fimbriae, ampulla and ismus. Ampulla will open into last part of the ovida known as ismus. Ampullary ismux junction is the place where fertilization takes place. In case of human beings, fertilization is internal. So in first chapter I covered external fertilization and internal fertilization if the fertilization takes place inside the body of female then it is called as internal fertilization so back to first chapter i am expecting that you have remembered the meaning of internal and external fertilization okay if the fertilization takes place inside the body of female then it is called as internal fertilization okay so that ends introduction to fertilization now next look over the various steps in fertilization various steps in fertilization First point is insemination or ejaculation. The release of seminal fluid, the release of seminal fluid, the release of seminal fluid into the female reproductive tract, or you can call it as a vagina, is called as insemination or ejaculation. Release of seminal fluid 
into the female reproductive tracts or vagina is called as insemination or ejaculation. During insemination, three to four ml of during ejaculation, three to four ml of seminal fluid is released in the female reproductive tract. It contains 200 to 300 millions of sperms. So look over here. During insemination or ejaculation, 3 to 4 ml of the seminal fluid is released into the female reproductive tract, which contains 200 to 300 millions of sperms, out of which hardly 50 to 100 will reach very near to the ovum and finally only one will combine with ovum resulting in the formation of gencode. Look over here, I will repeat this matter. The release of seminal fluid into the female reproductive tract, release of seminal fluid into the female reproductive tract or vagina is known as insemination or ejaculation. During insemination, 3 to 4 ml of the seminal fluid is released in the female reproductive tract, which contains 200 to 300 million of sperms. Hardly 50 to 100 will reach, hardly 50 to 100 will reach very near to the ovum. But finally, only one will combine with ovum, resulting in the formation of gencode. Okay. Finally, only one will combine with ovum resulting in the formation of gencode. Okay, so that ends first point. Prior to second point or before switch over to the second point, you remember one more important CT point. Out of 200 to 300 million subsperms, 60% should have normal size and shape. Out of 200 to 300 million of sperms, for normal fertility, 60% of the sperm should have normal size and shape. And 40% will show vigorous movement. Then only the individual is considered as an fertile. Or if the sperm count is less than 20 million, per ml of seminal fluid okay. we will repeat this much out of 200 to 300 million of sperms for normal fertility, 60% of the sperm should have, 60% of the sperm should have normal size and shape. 40% will show vigorous movement. So one more CT point you have to remember. If the sperm count is less than 20 million per ml of seminal fluid, if the sperm count is less than 20 million of ml of seminal fluid, then the individual is called as sterile or you can call the condition oligospermia. Look over this matter once again. The release of seminal fluid into the female reproductive tract is called as insemination or ejaculation. During the insemination, male releases 3 to 4 ml of the seminal fluid into the female reproductive tract, which contain 200 to 300 million of sperms, out of which 50 to 100, hardly 50 to 100 will reach very near to the ovum and finally only one will combine with ovum resulting in the formation of gencode. The same kind of explanation they have shown even in 3 idiot also. Okay. Move to this side. Out of 200 to 300 million of sperms, 60% of the sperm should have normal size and shape. 40% will show vigorous movement. If the sperm count is less than 20 million per ml for CT purpose, please remember this point. If the sperm count is less than 20 million per ml of the seminal fluid, then the individual is considered as an sterile or you can call the condition oligospermia. So that ends first step 
in fertilization. Now I will enter into second point. Okay. Second point is ovulation. Already this point we have come across in M C. The release of ovum, the release of ovum from the ovary into the ov duct is called as release of ovum from the ovary. Release of ovum from the ovary into the ov duct is called as ovulation. Generally, ovulation will occur on the 14th day of M C. Release of ovum from the ovary into the ovary duct is called as ovulation. Generally, ovulation will occur on the 14th day of 28 or 29 days M C. But according to some of the gynecologists, it may also occur on the 13th or 14th day. It may also occur on 13th or 14th day. The released ovum will remain alive for about 72 hours. But the fertilizing ability is there for only about 24 hours. Look over here for CT purpose. The released ovum will remain alive for about 72 hours. Released ovum will remain alive for about 72 hours but the fertilizing ability is there for about only 24 hours okay so that ends second point next i will switch over to the third point in fertilization Now look over the third point. Ovum will release fertilizing or you can call it as a gynogamone that will attract the sperm. Look over here. The first point is ejaculation or insemination. Second point is ovulation. Third important point in fertilization after releasing as you know already with respect to human beings is concerned ovum is released at a secondary oocyte stage ovum is released at a secondary oocyte stage further development will take place as soon as the sperm will enter inside the ovum so dear students in my previous class i covered this point in case of human beings ovum is released at a secondary oocyte stage into the ovary duct Further development will take place as soon as the sperm will enter inside the ovum. So ovum will release or it produces fertilizing that will attract the sperm. Instead of fertilizing, you can also utilize the term gynogamone. Ovum secretes fertilizing or gynogamone that will attract the sperm. But Sperm will also release anti-fertilizing or androgamone. Sperm also releases anti-fertilizing or androgamone. Both gynogamone and androgamone are 
fertilizing and anti-fertilizing will undergo chemical interlock. Both fertilizing and anti-fertilizing or gynogamone and androgamone will undergo chemical interlock that will help the sperms to attach to the wall of ovum. Both fertilizing and anti-fertilizing will undergo chemical interlock that will help the sperms to attach to the wall of ovum. Right? Now look over some more important events which occur in this third step. Point number one. As soon as the sperm touches the wall of the ovum, as soon as the sperm touches the wall of the ovum, acrosomase get activated and it will release lytic enzyme back to structure of human sperm i hope that you have remembered human sperm is composed of four parts head neck middle piece and tail it is composed of four parts head neck middle piece and tail it is composed of two important structures nucleus and acrosome Acrosome is a modified Golgi complex. It partially covers the nucleus forming an acrosomal cap. It contains lytic enzyme that helps to dissolve the wall of the ovum at the point of contact. Look over here. Both fertilizing and anti-fertilizing will undergo chemical interlock and helps the sperms to attach to the wall of ovum. When the sperm will attach to the wall of the ovum, lytic enzyme present in the acrosome get released that will dissolve the wall of ovum at the point of contact. Second point, ovum will also produce a small cone-like projection. Ovum will also produce a small cone-like projection known as fertilization that will engulf the head of the sperm as you know already only head only head and middle piece will enter inside the ovum but the tail will remain outside so look over the second point once again at the point of contact ovum will produce a small cone like projection known as fertilization cone that will engulf or that will receive the head of the sperm only head and middle piece will enter inside the ovum but the tail will remain outside as an ghost or you can call it as a donut okay next one more important point which occur in this third step when the sperm will touch us jona pellucida back to my previous class i am expecting that you have remembered that line in case of human beings ovum is released at a secondary oocyte stage it is having a layer known as jona pellucida when the sperm will touch the jona pellucida changes are noticed in the membrane lot of changes are noticed in the membrane that will prevent further entry of the sperm into the ovum or it will ensure only one sperm should be get combined with the ovum so look over here the points carefully first point as soon as the sperm touches the wall of the ovum acrosome will release lytic enzyme that will dissolve the wall of the ovum at the point of contact second point at the point of contact, ovum will produce a small projection known as fertilization cone that will engulf that will engulf the head of the sperm. Only head and middle piece will enter inside the ovum. Tail will remain outside. Third point: when the sperm will touches jona pellucida, when the sperm will touches Jona pellucida of the ovum, lot of cortical changes will occur that will further prevent the entry of sperm into the ovum or it will ensure only one sperm should get enter inside the ovum. Okay, so last point amphimixis.
look for the last point in case of fertilization and free mixes. Fusion of male and female pronucleus is called as amphimixis. mixes. Fusion of male and female pronucleus is called as amphimixis. mixes. It results in the formation of zygote, which is deployed in nature. Now look over sex determination in case of human beings. XX, XY method of sex determination. This XX, XY method of sex determination already we have come across in the chapter Principles of Inheritance and Variation under the guidance of Gurajan sir. But even though as a part of my duty, I will repeat the matter. Okay, XX. XY method of sex determination or you can call it as a syngametic method of sex determination. It is noticed in human beings as well as drosophila. I hope that you are remembered. The common name of the drosophila is fruit fly or vinegar fly or Cinderella of genetics. XX X method of sex determination is also called as syngametic method of sex determination. It is noticed in human beings as well as drosophila. Common name of this drosophila is fruit fly or cinderella of genetics or vinegar fly. So I hope that you know the deployed chromosome number of the human beings is 46. The deployed Chromosome number of the human beings is 46 out of 46, 44 are autosomes and 2 are allosomes. Autosomes are the chromosome which have no role in sex determination. 
the diploid chromosome number of the human beings is 46 out of 46 44 are autosomes and 2 are allosomes autosomes are the chromosome which have no role in sex determination autosomes are the chromosomes which have no role in sex determination allosomes will play a significant role in sex determination therefore they are also called as sex chromosome or you can call it as a gonosomes out of 46 44 are autosomes and 2 are allosomes okay out of 46 44 are autosomes and 2 are allosome male is heterogamity this is an p1 generation parents generation number one gametes fertilization and progeny male is heterogametic they produce two different kinds of sperms 50 percent will carry x chromosome 50 percent will carry x chromosome rest 50 percent will carry y chromosome accordingly you can call it as a gynosperms and androsperms look over the technical terms male is heterogametic they produce two different kinds of sperms 50 percent will carry x chromosome or you can call it as a gynosperm 50 percent will carry y chromosome or androsperms whereas female is homogametic they produce only one kind of gamete that will carry 22 autosomes plus X chromosome. If the sperm carry X chromosome fertilizes the ovum, then it will develop into female. When the sperm carry 22 autosomes plus X will fertilizes with the ovum carrying 22 autosomes plus X, no doubt it will develop into female. When the sperm carry Y chromosome will fertilize with the ovum then it will develop into male finally it is very clear that female or mother do not have any important role in sex determination but it is misfortune that or unfortunate that even in this modern era many females are get blamed for producing female baby please remember this line carefully the diploid chromosome number of the human beings is 46 out of 46 44 are autosomes and 2 are allosomes autosomes are the chromosome which have no role in sex determination male is heterogametic they produce two different kinds of sperms 50 percent will carry x chromosome 50 percent will carry y chromosome Whereas females are homogametic or mothers are homogametic. They produce only one kind of gamete that will carry X chromosome. If the sperm carry X chromosome, if the sperm carry X chromosome fertilizes with the ovum, then it will develop into female baby. If the sperm carry Y chromosome will combine with gamete or female gamete or ovum then it will develop into male baby so at the end dear students please remember this point and in future also you should not blame mothers or females mother do not have any role in sex determination but even though mothers or females are get blamed in the society for producing female baby